Mm. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My name is Aaron Malkin. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the literary director and dramaturg at New York Theatre Workshop. And I'm so happy that you were all here and we're so grateful and happy that we are back with Will Power um, for his class on story today. Um, we're broadcasting this live on Zoom and simultaneously streaming it on YouTube. Um, to offer a land acknowledgement to begin today, um, New York Theater Workshop has long sought to create art that interrogates our past as a way of understanding the present and shining light towards the future. To that end, we're taking time to recognize the history of the land we occupy in the East Village. And as we find ourselves in the digital space, we'd like to embrace this opportunity to acknowledge the many native lands from which we're all tuning in. We're posting a link in the chat where you can learn about the tribal history on the land, of the land on which you are situated. We invite everyone to take a moment to input your address into the website and post in the chat, uh, post in the chat the native land from which you are joining us. Let me take a minute to post it in the chat. Um, for the workshop, at Manhattan has always been a gathering and trading place for many indigenous peoples, where nations intersected from all four directions since time and memoriam. It was a place to gather and sometimes a place to seek refuge during times of conflict and struggle. We pay respect to all of the ancestors, past, present, and to their future generations. We acknowledge that New York Theater Workshop is situated on the island of Manhattan, Manohanet, on the island. The traditional lands of the Munsi Lenape, the Canarse, the Ukuchak, the Matanacoc, the Shenacoc, the Regawank, and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. We respect that the many indigenous peoples continue to live and work on this island and acknowledge their ongoing contribution to the area. I also want to thank everybody for being here today and being in community with us. Um, and without, let's see, this workshop is part of our virtual programming series, which is free and available to everybody in the community. Um, and if you're in the position to do so, please, uh, off, please make generously support the workshop or another organization of your, of your choosing. Um, I'm pleased now to, to introduce Will Power. Will is an internationally renowned playwright, performer, lyricist, and educator, and his plays and performances have been seen at hundreds of theaters and concert halls throughout the world, including Lincoln Center, the Public Theater, Battersea Arts Center, um, the Sydney Opera House, as well as numerous uh, venues in Asia, Africa, Europe, and throughout North, North America, and of course, uh, at home with us on East Fourth Street. Um, thank you, Will. Bam, thank you. What a great introduction. <laughs> read um, wonderfully, read wonderfully. <laughs> hey, it, yeah, so uh, it's great to be here with everyone. I am coming in from Southern California, um, acknowledging the indigenous land that I'm on as well. Um, many, many miles from you all, but trying to be as close as I possibly can. And we're gonna take probably about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, to explore story a little bit, storytelling. And even though there are so many different kinds of stories, different content, different forms, there's plays, there's novels, there's dance pieces. There are some things, particularly in this tradition in the West that, uh, and really globally, that unite all the forms of storytelling. So I love to talk, but I actually love more when you all are doing things. So this masterclass is gonna be a lot more you all engaging in activities and then me and the group responding, yeah? Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna create spaces where the bigger group, um, the ones that I can't see are gonna be able to participate too. There's gonna be a number of things that are gonna be, um, I'm gonna work a little more intimately with the group on the screen, but you can feel free to do those activities as well. And there's gonna be moments where you can ask questions and we can kind of engage with you as well. So that's a little something about what's going on. Um, I'd like to, I'm gonna put my thing on gallery. Oh, Zoom, Zoom is great. <laughs> and if, if I could just see the screen, if I can just see the people who are gonna be, I'm gonna be engaging with. Okay, there's key, okay, good, good, good. Who else, Doris? All right, great, hey, there we go, there we go. So let's just go with our group. And again, we're kind of like, well, we weren't voted, but we're kind of representing the larger group, you know, <laughs> like the, the unofficial larger group. So it's good to see y'all. Thank you for going down this road with, with me. And um, yeah, what I'd love to do is just, let's just go around. We'll start with Doris and then maybe go to Keith. And then is it Tremaine? Am I saying that right, bro? Tremaine? Okay. And then is it Celia? Okay. So we'll go Doris, Keith, Tremaine, Celia. So what I want you to do is 
just say your name. And uh, if you can pare it down one word, how you're feeling today. Okay, one word. And a lot of storytelling is about that, right? Like my whole thing is, if you can say something in 10 pages, why use 50 pages? You know what I mean? So this is kind of like that beginning thing. It's, it, it's easy, but hard at the same time. So your name, one word on how you're feeling today. And there's no judgment. That could be any word or any feeling you feel. And then the last thing is, um, if you were a fruit, what kind of fruit would you be and why? Okay. So your name, one word that describes how you're feeling in this moment right now or in this today, I'll say. And then if you were a fruit, what kind of fruit would you be and why? All right. Okay. So why don't we start with Doris? Go ahead. Oh, wait, Doris, I think you're muted. Hello, I'm Doris Hart, and I'm very excited, and I'm a sweet, juicy apple. Okay, why? Because I love applesauce, and I love healthy food. All right, good, good, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, now, Keith. Uh, my name is Keith, and today... Um, I'm feeling a little um, conflicted. Okay. Okay. And uh, if I were a fruit, I would be a kiwi because they have like, I don't know, hundreds of little seeds inside. And to me, those seeds represent potential. And I feel mm. like Great. I have those seeds just waiting to be, you know, materialized into something. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's deep. That's deep. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Okay, Tremaine. So uh, today I'm feeling, I'm feeling curious, I would say. Um, the funny thing is, I was also thinking Kiwi. Um, but that's because of uh, anytime I think of a fruit that has like a story, I think of uh, it's something me and my mom would share and something mm. she introduced to me when I was young. Mm. Um, yeah, so Q was my choice as well. Okay, all right, good, good. Same fruit for a very different reason, right? Okay, good. And I love that background. It almost looks like those are real chairs. Is that the workshop? It looks like New York Theater works a little a little emotional right now. Yeah, no, I know you're not at the workshop, but I was like, is that some kind of screen thing from New York Theater Workshop? Okay, great. Thank you, Tremaine. Okay, Celia, bring us home. Um, it, uh, I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, watermelon. Okay. And the reason, and watermelon with black seeds. I've got to be specific. Okay. Because if you get a real watermelon from before they screwed with it, because <laughs> now you can only find watermelons with white seeds, <laughs> Uh, if you like uh, in the summertime when yeah. I was with my great aunts in Mississippi mm. and they had cut it from their garden and you eat it and it's nice and cold and you're in the hot sun mm. it's like there's no better glory than I can think of like mm. it brought me so much happiness mm. and so um, that's why I would be a watermelon Okay, beautiful. That's fantastic. Yeah, that is a little suspicious with the seedless watermelons. You know what I mean? Like, totally. it's convenient in a way, but then it's like, hmm. it has no taste. It has it has zero taste. It's not it's not like the real deal. It's not the real deal. Okay, cool. And then I'm Will. Um, I'm gonna say light or lighter. I feel lighter today. Um, and then I'm gonna say I'm gonna say avocado. I'm going to say avocado because it's just in so many different cuisines, you know what I mean? And it's a fruit, but you don't think about it like a fruit. That's kind of how I see me sometimes. So, all right, cool, cool. So uh, thank you all for sharing that. Let's just dive right in. And what we're going to do this afternoon is we're going to do three activities, okay? Three primary activities. The third one is the juicy one. That's the kicker, okay? But we got to do these two activities to kind of lay the foundation for the third one, okay? Okay. So for the first one, what we're going to do real simply, I want us to take about five minutes. Everyone have something to write with or write on? And again, the participants, the greater participants, you all can feel free to, to, to do these as well. Um, you don't have to, but feel free. So you're going to take five minutes and I want you to think about your community or a community. Okay. Now, community 
can mean a lot of different things and it's all valid depending on who you are. And most of the time we're part of different communities, right? I might be part of the artist community. I might also be part of the African-American community. I might be part of the, the, the West Coast community, right? Um, so I want you to pick one, one community. It could be a locale. So it could be, you know, where you live, a neighborhood. It could be the neighborhood or community that you grew up in or where you live now or where you visited, you know, your grandparents in the summertime. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be necessarily a physical community, right? It could be an online community. It could be an identity community. It could be a cultural community. So I want you to think about a community, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pretty swift five minutes and you're gonna write a vivid description about this community, okay? And we're gonna basically use this as the foundation for the world of our stories, okay? Um, so it doesn't have to be a story. It can be bullet points. It could be a poem. It could be just a stream of consciousness. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be like one particular form, but your job right now, your goal is to write a vivid description. What is the energy there? You know, what are the, what are the smells? What are the people? Um, yeah, what's the vibe? You know, almost as if you're writing to someone who's never been there or never experienced that community or knows very little, if anything, about that particular community, okay? So you only got five minutes, so it's really quality, not quantity, you know? If you got 10 lines, that's great. If you got two lines, that's great. If you got five pages, that's great. It doesn't matter, you know, quantity is not always better, right? And as theater artists, we, we, I think we know this, you know, it's what the quality is. So I'm gonna turn off my screen. So we're gonna come back at 1.23. Okay, um, and then let's just go with it. Okay, and if you got any questions, I'm still here. So ask the question, I'll come back on or put it in the chat, but that's kind of what's going on. Okay, everybody understand? Okay, cool, let's go.
I had two more minutes. Two more minutes. Thank you. Okay, please finish that last thought. I hate to bring the writer out, but uh, please finish that last thought. It doesn't have to be a finished work. Just finish that last idea, please. All right. Okay, cool. I hate, I really hate that. I really hate just bringing a person out of the, you know, but. All right, we're gonna circle back to that. We're gonna, so keep that for us now. Don't throw that away. We're gonna circle back to that, okay. Now, the second thing is, I'd love for us to go a little deeper into this community, into this world, and you're gonna pick one person or one thing, and you're gonna write a vivid description about her, or him, or it, or them, okay, or they. So think about something in this world, in this community that has some personality. It could be your aunt. It could be the bus driver. It could be like a library. Was there a particular library or a school? or an abandoned warehouse that, you know, all kind of crazy things went on or a fence or a dog. Was there a dog that barked all the time and would wake you up or something like that, right? So think about something in the community, in this community. Um, and you're gonna write a vivid description about that entity. Just real quick, it can be a group, but it should be a group that kind of moves as a unified entity. You know what I mean? Like, like if you ever watch um, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, the birds are like one kind of antagonist. Does that make any sense? It's not like individualized birds, right? So it could be a group of ladies going to church or a group of children going to school. So it can be a group, but you're kind of, you're kind of describing them and, and giving this vivid thing as that one single entity, okay? All right, I'm gonna give you three minutes now. So it's a real tight thing, all right? So again, quality, not quantity. Just try to get it out. Okay, and here we go. Okay, one minute, one minute, please. Okay, please finish that last thought, that last idea, come on back. Hmm. 
Okay, good, good, good. Thank you all. All right. So um, I would love to hear a couple of uh, some of these. It's optional, though. You don't have to share this. I know it's kind of like there's people on the call. You don't know who they are. But if any of the four of you all want to share, I would love to have you share. Anybody, any takers? Yeah. Doris? Okay, cool. Why don't you read both, both things? Okay. If you feel um, comfortable. Yeah. Sure. A community of storytellers in various cities in Scotland as we gather today on Zoom. We're ready to enchant each other with tales, ready to tell you about Athena who came down to punish a purse, a woman who was very jealous and who was a great um, weaver, but she thought too much of herself. Hmm. And then there's the account of meeting your future in-laws for the first time way down south in Georgia. And there are other tales too. The one about the movie, uh, the sale of Rin Tin Tin whore, uh, um, dog that you bought for $1,000. Today we're on Zoom, but usually we get together from four, the years 14 to 85, all ages. Mm. And we sit in the cafe, we smell the cappuccino, drink it, and then we tell each other tales. Um, that's the first one. Mm, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Let's hear the second one. The first Please. time I met Michael, it was at a pub, the upper floors, as we sat in a circle telling tales, and I really didn't know him. And mm. at the end of the evening, he offered to drive us back to our apartment. So we got in his car, but the car, he kept driving on and on and on way past our apartment. And since I didn't know him, we felt that we were being kidnapped by a stranger. We didn't know why he kept going. And I cried, stop, you're going the wrong way. And he kept going and I was really scared. And then he turned to us and he said, I really wanted to invite you back to my house in Glasgow. I know I didn't ask you, but would you like to go? Oh, interesting, okay. <laughs> okay, I've got a ton of questions, but I'll hold that for later. Thank you for sharing that, Doris. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we're going to come back. We'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to Michael. Okay, anybody else? Again, it's optional, but if you want, you can totally share. Anybody? Keith? Okay, go ahead. So mine is um, is more like a, just like bullet points or a stream mm -hmm. of consciousness, not really like a narrative type. Um, so the community that I wrote about is North Philly, where I grew up. Mm-hmm. So I wrote uh, North Philly, crowded, too crowded, comfy, question mark, cement playgrounds, hard with rough edges, corner stores with corner boys, storefront churches on every other block, row homes look like buck teeth, mm. replaced homes for vacant lots. Mm. They Excuse me, sorry. My wife called me. Go ahead. All your business. <laughs> Neighbors nosy all up in your business. Watchdogs, news feeds, game of telephone, dragging trash to the curb days in advance, sofas, mattresses, fridge sits like relics for, for weeks, camaraderie, block parties, music, big ass speakers, styrofoam plate exchanges, gunshots in the distance, maybe fireworks, laughter, joy, fights, first kiss, first fight, first death. And then yeah. Yeah. the more specific one was like the playground that's there mm -hmm. um, in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, the bucket of blood is what my mom called it. Shell casings, crack vials, and blackened miles. Crack concrete where weeds sprout out. Weed smoke billowing when the sun is out. Basketball hoops, torn and tattered nets. Fences leaning, pulled, and stretched beyond capacity. The gazebo with concrete tables and benches. Dirty little play area for rambunctious ass kids. Injury is imminent. Okay, great, great, great. That was fantastic. Very powerful. I could actually see it as you were uh, talking. Just such descriptive, vivid language. I particularly like the, the the row houses like buck teeth and the styrofoam plates and the just on a personal level, just to like, is it gunshots? Maybe fireworks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, I'm not laughing at it. I just you know, growing up, I, I can relate to that when I was younger. It's like, oh, oh no. you know, so yeah, really, really nice. Um, are you near Germantown? Is that is that over there? Uh, I am near Germantown. I didn't grow up in Germantown. It's like 15 minutes away. I'm a little okay. further south near Temple's main campus. 
Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I know a little bit. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you for that, Keith. Okay, anybody else want to share? Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go, Celia, and then Tremaine. Um, okay, so the community, it says, um, do I need to say where it is or no, what it is? You no, can okay. if you want, but you don't have to. You can just jump in. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, hot. Generations of Black and white people related through slavery. NAACP. Poor Black, rich whites. Poor whites, rich Blacks. Democrat. Quirky people. Deep-rooted history. The food will make you fat and the alcohol will make you fall over. Uh, men who open doors and carry bags and they don't even know you. They don't even ask. They just do. People laugh deep and hug hard. 14 antebellum homes still stand and are occupied to this day. The Mississippi River. No plantations. Just bankers that sold cotton. Mm. Um, and then uh, the... What was the second one again, Will? Uh, just a person or a, a thing, an okay. entity, a vivid description of an entity within that community that you just so beautifully described. Right. Yeah. So this is um, 1960s, over 300 men, women, and children, mostly kids under 21, try to march for their right to vote during the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even before they're able to march, they're loaded on buses to be taken to the parchment penitentiary where they are in jail for days while some are brutally tortured. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that also was a very powerful, complex uh, rendering of the community. I know when I moved south, I lived down, not Mississippi, but in Texas and then Georgia. It's mm. deep because people are so nice of all cultures, but then you got this undercurrent of this history that's real violent and ferocious. You know what I mean? It's like, but people are also nice and it's, it's like incredibly nice, you know? So it's, it's, it's interesting. Okay, great, great. So one question before we move on, really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, my question is for your uh, person or thing or entity, are you looking at the kids that demonstrate or are you looking at the larger civil rights demonstrators? Because you kind of said both. I just want to make sure I know yeah, which one we're talking about. I guess the kids, you know, okay. like everybody that was involved in that, in yeah. that they were supposed to march, but they never marched. They were just directly when they came out of the church and out of the house they went directly into the the right. sheriff all put them on buses right right okay okay we're going to come back to that we're going to come back to that thank you thank you okay Whew. okay tremaine go ahead all right so my place is uh where i'm from uh, east new york brooklyn mm. um and i i did sort of like bullet points because that like just random like images sure yeah into my mind mm -hmm. um all right so summer sounds of trap r&b dimbo and bachata Ch chatting on the steps dapping up long time bros bright mondays i mean bright mornings filled with chirping and floral scenes from well-kept yards next to unkempt mm -hmm. homes and yards there's grit in the way some people walk and joy in others uh, and for my um, entity and character description, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he wears the latest designer, a Mary Jeans, a chain with the diamonds dancing. You can't tell him he ain't fly. The re-up just came in, so he got to make some more to sell if he's going to stay fly and eat. And that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. Also very strong. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're picking up some steam in the, in the, in the session, picking up some steam. All right. Great, great. So let's hold on to those. We're going to, we're going to circle back to those, but let's hold on to those and let's move ahead. Um, I'd like us to kind of discuss, and it's not that I have the answers. I have some definitions that, that work for me, that have guided me that I want to share, but I also want us to be kind of a conversation. So I want us to talk together about a few different basic principles in storytelling. Yeah. Um, and again, I'll, I can guide it, but it's not like I know everything. Like, what do you think of this, of this, you know? And some of these things we know, some of them we know um, kind of instinctively just growing up around stories. All of us, I think, have been around stories, whether those are commercials, whether it's theater, whether it's someone telling a story in a park or a playground or on the bus. You know, we're constantly surrounded and inundated with stories. Yeah. So I want to I want to ask what is well, before we get I was going to say conflict before we get to conflict. Let me ask you all, what is a character? Let's see if we can get a one, 
a one sentence definition. I know those things are vast, but like, what is a character? Anybody want to take a crack at that? And also our uh, larger group, if you all want to put your, your, throw your hat into the ring and put it in the chat or the questions, I'll try to read those. I don't know if I can read a whole bunch of them, but I can try to read some of them if you want to try to answer that too. What is, what is a character in story? Um, I guess I would say it, character has to be like a, like a fully realized being mm -hmm. human or, other, or creature or whatever, but like they had the full um, emotional life. Mm -hmm. And in the context of story, they sort of serve as the vehicle to forward the plot. That's pretty good. Let me let me follow up with you, Keith. What do you mean? Can you say a little bit more about? Because I think this is key about being in oh, this I, context. Yeah, yeah. I guess like my like personal aesthetic is more so like realism. But mm -hmm. you know, if if you're creating a character that supersedes or defies sort of the logic that we understand that humans exist in, then it could be anything that you imagine, right? Like a mm -hmm. creature or even like if, you, if you're writing like, if it's uh, like say for instance, you're writing like Pixar or animation or something like mm -hmm. animals or whatever, like, mm -hmm. but it has to be something that has a, a depth of emotional life or possibility. Okay. Because that's how you're gonna get conflict if the if the if the character is affected by something. They have to be like tossed one way or another by things that are happening to them. Okay, okay. I think that's true. Okay, let's keep let's keep going. I think that's I think that's that's pretty pretty in there. I'm looking at some of these things here. Isabella says a person who experiences fundamental change. Okay. I'm gonna call out this idea of a person, you know. Um uh, not that it's wrong, but just, yeah, no, someone else says, uh, Charlotte said, a person who is being influenced by the actions and circumstances around her. I think that's good, too. But again, I want to talk about this person. An entity that drives the story. Again, person, entity, being. I think that's key. I want to talk about with a character. Grace says, character, summary of a person that carries the story. Okay. Um, let's see. Someone with their stories. I'm going to mess your name up. Zhao, Zhao Sun says um, and nancy says someone who the audience follows as he she it put it pushes out a story by virtue of action philosophy and thoughts i think that action is good i think that action is good um a character this is Veneta. A character is an entity with a specific quality that defines how it responds and also has an objective it pursues i think those are all good so let me just follow up with this entity person thing can a can a dog be a character Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Can a can a can a can a uh, can a cartoon be a character? Sure. What about a rock? Anything can be a character if you, you okay. give it life or give it action. Yeah. Okay. Even the city, and sometimes in stories like the city, like New York City itself, is a character. Character, right? So let me ask this question. It's not a trick question, but I just because I think everything that everyone said is spot on. I just want to go just to the heart of it. What is the difference between a rock or let's say a table that's a character and a table that's not a character? It's a table, right? What's the difference between a table in a play and a table that's a part of the set? Or again, um, Celia, you said about New York City. At what point does New York City become a character? At what point does New York City become the vivid world that's the backdrop kind of what we describe that's i think the key to character anybody want to talk about that i feel like it has to be active like it has to do something or have a motivation or it has to be it has to be it has to be active so otherwise it's just an object right and you can you can endow an object with meaning and perhaps that gives it character or pushes it in the direction of becoming a character in the context of the story, but it has to do something. Um, right, right. So let me ask you this. So, so because I agree, right? A character has to be active. They have to be pursuing something. And that gets into the objectives and all that kind of stuff, you know, that we might touch on. But still, 
there might be an example where there's a wildebeest that's not a character, but they still want something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, theoretically, a plant wants something if it's growing. Yeah, I know I'm getting kind of heady here, but you know, so I agree with you. And what else can we add to that? I, I see here, uh, Colleen says, when it becomes centered to move the story, when it becomes centered to move, okay. I think like uh, similar to that, like it has to do with who or what perspective the audience is experiencing mm -hmm. the story developed through. Like, Tell me more, what do you mean more perspective? So if we talk about the table as a character, maybe in some way the writing or if it's a film, we see a lot of shots of the, t the table and things that are happening to the table compared to like, I don't know, there's like a mise en set, just tool, and there's just something that just passes by. Right, right, right. I mean, I think that's pretty good. It's tricky though, right? Because you can have a, a, a movie called The Jewel Box and that Jewel <laughs> Box can get a lot of camera time. You know what I mean? It, you know, or like the piano lesson. I don't know if the piano in August was piano is necessarily, ca maybe you could argue it is. It's definitely an important piece of which the characters revolve around. Maybe you can make that argument, but I don't think the piano is a character in yeah. August Wilson's piece. I mean, what I would say is, and again, this is everything y'all saying is right, but what I would say is, is the active is important, right? Pursuing an, a goal. Um, I would say also that a character is a metaphor for a human being. That's what I would say. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. It's not a human being, it's a metaphor. Does that make any sense? And to me, that's what distinguishes a table that's a character from a table that's a, a set piece, even if it's an important set piece, you know? Um, it has to be carved, or it usually is carved in a way that I can see myself in that entity, right? So if I'm watching Bugs Bunny, that is a character because that, that, that bunny is taking on potentially human attributes of a trickster and mixing it with, you know, we're imagining, hey, if I was in this world, that's what the bunny, that's what I would be. Does it make any sense? Yeah. Um, you know, and this goes, again, I, I bring up animal shows a lot too, because you see like, a, I don't know if you guys ever watched the March of the Penguins or, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, like they're filming those penguins for like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of hours. They're not showing you everything. They're not showing you when the penguin just sitting there for six hours, they're kind of showing you stuff that kind of makes the penguins into characters, you know? They're like, you know, the, the mother, you know, takes care. And I was like, oh man, that's like my mother taking care. I mean, I'm being simplistic here, but you know what I mean? You know, the, the elephants look for food. Oh man, that's like us looking for food, you know what I mean? It's like, they're not gonna just show the elephant doing something unless they try to connect it to an experience of ours. So it's like a poetic representation, okay? Even if it appears as a person, I get this a lot when I, when I do workshops, someone's like, they're writing something and like, well, I wrote it this way because it happened. But it's like, once you put it into a script or make it a story, it's not life. It's a metaphorical representation of life. Does it make any sense? Mm -hmm. So it's a, so to me, a character is a metaphor of a human being. And all those things you all said, I think are, are true in that. It has to have pur purpose, it's an entity, you know. But again, it may still be a critical piece to the story. And again, I, I, I'm open to any arguments, but I think, August Wilson's piano lesson. I don't think the piano is a character. The mm -hmm. piano is not a metaphor for the, for the a human being. It is a metaphor for family legacy, you know, or for, you know, heirlooms or, you know, post slave. It's all, it's a, it, but it's not necessarily a human being, right? It doesn't have agency. It doesn't work as opposed to Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit is a, is a, is a character, right? Okay. That's just something real quick. Again, there's probably deeper things. We could explore that forever, but that's just a, a quick, definition. All right, now let's get to it. What is conflict? And let me just say real quick before we get into it that um, I was just real, I, this is 20 second version. I was taking it to some tap dance classes. Actually, when I was working on uh, flow at New York Theater Workshop, I had to learn how to do some movement because one of the characters moved a different way. So I, I got found this, this brother, uh, Omar, is it Omar Edwards? I think he's like Savion's cousin, something. Anyway, up in Harlem, he was t doing free tap dance classes donation only. So I was taking these tap dance classes. There was another guy in the class named Foots. So me and Foots were on the subway after the class and he was kind of talking to me, but really talking to himself. And he was like, you know what? There's like almost four, maybe over 4,000 ways to do a shuffle. You guys know what a shuffle is? That's one like, you know, tap dance move. Just one amongst a whole bunch of, I was like, there's 4,000 different kinds of shuffles. He's like, yeah, there's probably 4,000 variations of shuffle. I was like, man, that's deep. Wow, that's just, that's just one step out of all the steps. So again, as a storyteller, I start thinking about uh, conflict. I'm like, you know what? You can study conflict 
dramatic conflict and never get to the bottom. You know what I mean? You never get to the bottom. And you do get to the bottom, maybe you need to go do something else. You know what I mean? You've, you've reached it. So conflict is infinite. It's, it's as, 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 as primal and as, as centered of the human experience as you can get. You know what I mean? So I'm not expecting us to kind of like solve conflict or discover conflict in, in 30, 40 minutes. But again, let's see if we can get a one sentence working definition about conflict. Okay, go. Who wants to take a crack at that? What is conflict? Uh, Celia, yeah. Um, Anybody in the chat or questions? Go ahead, when uh, characters have opposing needs. Mm, mm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's okay. Anybody want to add to that? That's similar good. to that, um, I'll just say like two opposing forces colliding. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. I, I see here uh, their action should affect the story, different wants. Yeah, different wants that are opposed, right? Opposed to each other, like what you said, Jermaine. A feeling of tension or unease. Yeah, I think tension. Yeah, I think you said it, Jermaine. I think it's, it's too uh, a tension. It's a tension between two, I would say, irreconcilable forces, okay? So to me, they might reconcile. That's the story, right? But it's two irreconcilable forces. And the irreconcilable aspects of it is the active tension. You know what I mean? It has to be active. So if Tremaine has issues with me and I got issues with, with Tremaine and he moves to Kansas and I moved to Hawaii and we forgot about each other, that's not really a conflict, you know? But if we're still actively opposed, that is, or if he moves to Kansas, I move to Hawaii, but Tremaine, what he said is still working on my head. Right? What I said, I said, that's still an active conflict. Okay. So yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And again, a lot of stories have you know, one central conflict, right? So one main conflict between two opposing forces. And then, then that is made up of other medium-sized conflicts. Does it make any sense? And that is made up of a main spot. So there's a, there could be hundreds of conflicts in a story, but usually in, in our tradition, it all kind of connects back to one big conflict, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. And I would say there's three kinds, you know? There's character against what or in opposition i, I like this this uh, forces right so one character is a, a character in, uh, in opposition of another person another person right or another character right yep that's one kind of conflict all right within that you got literally gazillion different ways to do it right mm -hmm. okay what's another what's a, what's a, one more kind of conflict there's two more against oneself, two more. oneself. Ag against oneself right and then the third one of course is uh, human being God. or conflict. What? I said God or nature. Well, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the third one is nature environment, right? Environment. Um, you know, one of my favorite television shows is the wire. I don't know if you guys ever checked that out. Great show. And there's a lot of conflicts in there, but I would say the main, con I mean, this kind of goes back to what Celia said about New York in my, I would argue that the main co conflict in the wire, um, is not just about, character and character and character, but it's character in opposition to Baltimore, right? Specifically West Baltimore. You know, that is the main, that is the main push and pull, right? Um, and I would argue that God is a kind of conflict, but I would argue that usually that kind of conflict in, in tension with the divine filters through one of those three. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, oh God, why do you bring this havoc upon us, this hurricane? Or it's like, I'm, okay, I'm going to age myself here, but you guys know the George Burns, like, anyway, oh God, like I'm God, you know, George Burns. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's an okay, anyway, he's like this old comedian, uh, legendary. Anyway, he had this series of oh God movies and he would come in like, I'm God. And so in that case, it was opposition to God, but it was in the, the thing of a person. Or it's like, God's in my head, he's telling me to do this. No, it's not. She's telling me to do that, you know? So I feel like it, I look at it not necessarily like a separate kind of conflict. I guess you could, but it's more like it filters through those three, you know? Now, let me just let me just do a little digress here, and then we're going to come back to what we're going to do. Um, most stories, most good stories, exist at all three levels of conflict, right? So you have a, a story that has a character against another character. You also have a story in that story. You might also have another ca ca uh, conflict that has character against uh, her or him or it or their self, and then you have a level in there that's character between uh, character against environment. OK, but you don't have to do that. For example, a James Bond movie 
is mostly character against environment, mostly, right? With a little bit character versus character. There's almost no, James Bond, for better or worse, never doubts himself, you know what I mean? He's like, I'm gonna save the day, get the girl. It's very sexist, but you know, I'm gonna do this, right? So there's no, his, char- his conflicts are usually like, you know, how are you gonna get through this, Bond? Oh my God, amazing, I gotta go through, you know? It's like that. So, you know, Ham- uh, Hamlet has all three levels, right? Hamlet has like, the, the main two I would say is character versus character and also character versus himself, right? Hamlet spends a lot of time, you know, in the soliloquy about what should I do, what should I do? But there's also that third level because there's this danger with, uh, what's his name, Fortinbras is gonna come. That's the least level, I would say, but that's still an intimate, imminent tension that kind of pulls on it, right? So I would argue in Hamlet, the, the character versus character and the character versus themselves are the main conflicts that post through that play, but the other one ex- exists too, okay? So you don't have to have all three levels of conflict. Um, it doesn't mean it's the best story. One story might be mostly in your head or something like that. But all, sometimes good stories have all three levels. Now, real quick, before we get into it, if you look at uh, a movie, a play, and a novel, right? Every form, of, and there's other forms, every form of storytelling, even though they can incorporate all three of those levels in their, in their stories, each one of those forms excels at a different kind of storytelling. In other words, a, so, so if you look at uh, let me break it down. So let's say you look at the novel, you look at a, a theater play, right? And you look at a movie, right? And you look at different conflicts, uh, character versus character, character versus him or herself, character versus environment, okay? Let's look at the novel. Which part, which layer of, char- of conflict does the novel um, really address to the fullest of its ability as a form of storytelling? Character versus character, character versus him, and I'm going too crazy, just let me know. Character versus character, character versus him or her or their self, or character versus environment. The novel does all three, but which one, which one is it really, really prominent as? Okay, I see Caroline says, well, she's right. Caroline says, character versus self. And that is right, that is right. So stories that the most prominent layer of conflict is character versus uh, self, those tend to be the best within a novel or a, a, a book form, right? It can do all three, but that's where it's hard to beat the novel in stories, in narratives, in which the prime conflict is character against himself or herself or their self, right? It's real hard to beat the novel with that, just in terms of the form. And again, how do we experience the novel? Do we go to a theater and, and, and watch it? I mean, I guess we could, but <laughs> how do we experience the novel? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we, we experience it yeah, by ourselves. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, we experience the novel by ourselves. So the way that we experience in, uh, the novel as an audience is, 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 is kind, of, uh, kind of in tandem with the form of storytelling that, it, ex- it, that it, it really excels at, okay? All right, now, what about theater? That's probably a little easier. What, which form of storytelling? It can do all three, but which one does it really, really, really move the house with? Conflict. Okay. Okay, yeah, but what kind of conflict? Character versus character. character versus character. Character versus character, right? That's the one with theater. The if di- I'm gonna tell you, what's that? The dialogue is the is one of the, the key. That's right, the, right. And that's a whole nother, we could do that in the next session. But yeah, <laughs> dialogue, yeah, you're right. Dialogue is real key, right? And not that much inner, I mean, again, with Shakespeare, if you're doing certain verse plays you have, or musicals, you have a little more room to kind of be like, I love you, I love you, you know what I mean? But it's still not as much as the novel. You can't, a character is gonna be hard for a character just going off 20 pages about how they feel inside. Even Shakespeare, those soliloquies, it's like a page, two pages. He's not soliloquizing for 20, years, 20 pages. Even Shakespeare, I'll just be like, Shakespeare, come on, give me some dialogue, give me some action, right? So you're exactly right, Doris. If I'm doing a play about World War II, I'm gonna bring it into two soldiers in a bunker. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the best, that, it, you can't top theater for that kind of form of storytelling, for that kind of conflict. Again, musicals, you have more flexibility, you can move places. Verse plays, you know, you can go into like more poetry, you have more, but still, you know, even The Lion King, you know, when they do the, uh, those great thing with the, I'm not gonna do it, but you know, the gazelles going over the savannah and that kind of stuff, they do it with human bodies, right? Human bodies do it. They, you know, they, they, it's like it's it's effects, but it's really through the human body they take you to the to the, the Serengeti, right? It's still human beings doing it. And of course, we experience theater live, right? So again, it, the form of storytelling reflects that. You got live people in the audience watching live people on stage, and then of course, 
the film is character versus environment, right? You know, television is little. Television is kind of like an amalgam because it came from radio, from the talk plays. That's a little. It's a little. It's a little more of a mix in a way. Although I think it does bend more visual, but film, it's more like human against environment, right? Think about a chase scene, right? Classic chase scene. Like what was uh, uh, uh Chinese? Was it Chinese Connection? What was the one with um, Popeye? What was it? Gene Hackman. Was that Chinese Connection? Anyway, we chasing the guy on the train. Anyway, a chase scene. It's character versus character, but the main thing is character versus environment. It's like the maze. It's like the minotaur, right? I'm trying to chase you. Watch out. Watch that lady with the groceries. Watch out for that guy with the thing. Watch out. Oh, oh, right. And so, I mean, again, it's going to be, it'd be hard to do. If I came in New York theater workshop and I said, Hey Jim, I got this play in 20 minutes is a chase scene on stage. I'm not saying, he, I mean, he might let me do it. He's a nice guy. I don't know. What are we going to do? You know what I mean? It's going to be, I mean, we can, there's a way to do it. You can slow it down again, dance theater. You know what I mean? There's ways to do it. But it's hard to, to, to match, you know, the chase scene in a film or, you know, you go to the wall of China in a film, you can see it, you know, or in a play, maybe the people will become the wall of China and maybe in a novel, I'll vividly describe the wall of China. So it's just a little something to think about. Sometimes you're writing a, a story and the story might be great, but you might be in the wrong, uh, the wrong genre. This might be a novel and you're trying to make a play out of it. Or this might be a, a play and you're trying to make a movie out of it. That's also why I mean, part of it is also the talent and the skill, but that's also why to me, um, some, some novels translate better into film than others. You know what I mean? Some plays you know, become novels better. The novels that translate into film better tend to be the novels that have a lot more character versus character. You know what I mean? If there's a novel where it's like, it's like 80% in the mind of the protagonist, it's not, that is not possible. That's harder to translate into film or to a, a, to a piece. Okay, all right. And then finally, uh, or what's a resolution before we jump into it? this last name? What's a resolution? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Benita says, what about solo storytelling? Solo storytelling is a little bit like, uh, it's, a the it's theater or it's oral performance. So it's still more about character versus character, but it has a little bit more room to do that be because of the form of it, right? So. In, in storytelling, you can tell more narratives, right? You can tell more about that. Mm -hmm. So it's more like a musical or like verse drama in that way. But still, you still got to bring characters into it, right? Like if, you if Mike Daisy's going off for two, three hours, it's about how he sees things as a commentary, but he's also telling you stories. And in those stories are characters versus characters. Does this make any sense? Mm -hmm. Mike Daisy is not just like two and a half hours of like, this is what I feel about Apple. This is what I feel about America. It's like, we're like, so I went here. And I did this and this woman came out and then this guy came out and they came out and you know what I mean? So it's more like, it's not as much live dialogue, it's more narration, but it's still, it still kind of prominently features the character versus character. You know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of like, you have more room to do that. Yeah, you have more room to do that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, or it could be a boring fall, fall asleep. That's right, Vanilla, that's right. All right, um, so let's go to resolution. What is a resolution? Um, I was going to say that it's I, it's the the characters who are in conflict either succeed or fail at at solving the conflict. Okay, okay. They either succeed or fail in solving, getting what they want, right? Or maybe there's something in the middle, right? Okay. Or, who else wants to check that? That's or, a, that's a good start. Uh huh. Resolution is um, a resolution can be a transformation of a character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's all good. That's all good. And uh, let's see. Go, let's go to the chat. Charlotte said, "Resolution is bringing the conflicts and character paths to an end." Yeah, I think that's good. I think it's like. I mean, this is probably cheating, but I think a resolution is when the conflict is resolved. You know, what I mean? when the tension ends. But the key thing here is. That doesn't necessarily mean that the character gets what uh, she or he or they want, right? If I'm in the desert, I'm trying to get to Vegas, water, water, and I die, it is resolved, right? Unless I'm in a world where people can come back and all that kind of stuff, right? So uh, it's almost like, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like when that tension is over for that period of time, okay? And of course, you know, again, you're looking at movies like Lord of the Rings, every movie has its own conflict, right? 
and every movie had its own, or Star Wars, every movie had its own resolution where the tension ended for that moment of time. But then it was the bigger conflict, right? And so the next movie had its own conflict. So it doesn't mean it's a good thing. And again, if we have more time, we can get into like how, kind of what you're saying, Keith, is success or failure, but there's also a lot of like middle ground in that, right? Like you might, I'm kind of getting off topic, but you know, you might succeed as getting what you want, but it wasn't what you thought and you're miserable. You know what I mean? Or you don't get what you want, but then you realize you're actually more, you have more joy by not getting them. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, there's a lot of little middle grounds in there, irony, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's when that tension is resolved. That was a real fast, quick and dirty of some concepts that again, like Foote said, we could spend a lifetime. I'm still learning. We all still learn about those things, but that's just a little something about character, conflict, and resolution and story, okay? Any quick questions before we dive into this final, final thing I'm gonna have y'all do? Okay, all right, so this is what I want you to do. And again, everyone else at home, please do it. And maybe we can try to get a couple of y'alls in there. We probably can't get 30 of them in. Maybe we'll get a couple in too. All right, so what you're gonna do is um, you are going to create a story, okay? Um, now I got, I'm gonna give you a, a number of different things. So you can either like write this down or if you're the kind of person that's like, uh-huh, 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 I got it. You know what I mean? So, you know, how, wh whatever best way you retain information, okay? But I want this story to have a number of elements. Okay, so the story is gonna be about the character that you described in your second piece. So I think, Doris, you have Michael. Yes. Salia, you had the, that's why I want to specify, you had the children in the 60s. Tremaine, you had the brother that had the, the, the necklace bouncing. Was it, do you have a name? I don't think you had a name, but okay. Yeah, you don't have to have it. And Keith, you had the playground. Yeah, the playground. Yeah, that was good. That's good. Yeah. So you are going to take this character, right? Whether it's a person, place, a thing. Um, I like the fact that we have a lot of different representation. We, with Salia, we even got the past, which I think is kind of interesting, right? So Salia, you, you, can, you can have some interesting fun with this. I want to come back to you. But you're going to write a story about this this uh this entity right this character the story has to take place in the world that you've described in the first piece all right now with Celia or anyone it doesn't have to take place at that moment so Celia, it could be about these children i'm not saying you should do this but it could be about these children today now they're 70 years old or you know what's going on or it could be about that moment or you know keith it could be at the playground at night or in the daytime or you know i guess your thing keith is more like the playground is the character and maybe the world is what surrounds it. Cause you said your world was North Philly, if I mean, you know what I mean? So the playground is not necessarily the place. The playground is the character. Does that make any sense? And the world that takes place is the neighborhood. Okay. So about this character takes place in this community. All right. You need to have a clear, strong conflict. Okay. Now, remember we, and I know I did it pretty quick. Remember we talked about the different kinds of conflicts, right? Um, so character, so think about your character. Is the character in opposition to another character? Is the character in opposition to itself or is it in, with itself? Or is the character in opposition to the environment, right? The world, okay? Or is it all three? You only have to have at least one, but you can have all three if you want or two, at least one, okay? So what is the conflict? What is the resolution, okay? Again, remember, not solution, right? It doesn't have to solve, but resolution. And if you don't have a resolution, that's valid too, but you have to have a real good reason for it. Now, Aaron and some of the people at New York Theater Workshop, workshop know that I love, I, I love Greek tragedies. It's some of the greatest stuff ever written. But one of the things that they kind of fed was that day ex machina, you know what I mean? <laughs> eh, they kind of missed the mark with that one. Nobody's perfect. Even Shakespeare has, you know, all the plays aren't amazing. Maybe almost all of them, you know what I mean? You know, we're all human. You know, even the great August Wilson, I didn't really like, uh, King Headley and the radio golf. It's okay. You know what I mean? Eight out of 10 is classics. Hey, I'll take that. I'll take that. Eight out of 10. That's my opinion. Okay. So De Ex Machina, Machina was this thing where the playwright would weave this amazing drama, right? All these complex things. And then at the end, the God would come up with a machine and like solve the whole thing, right? So it's usually kind of cheating. Now, there are good reasons to do that. There's a filmmaker named John Sales, um, who's one of my favorite filmmakers. And he had this, this movie called Limbo. And at the end of the movie, the, this, this, this couple is holding each other on this island and this guy played by Chris Christopherson, which was freaking random. But anyway, he's on this little airplane coming to the island. But because the, the way sails wove the tail, we don't know if, if, the, if Chris Christopherson is coming to save them or kill them. Damn, boom, roll credits. <laughs> so that worked. That worked because it was called Limbo or like the last episode of The Sopranos, right? First, I was really upset. I'm like, oh, what is this? But then I was like, oh, I see. He's saying, 
This is how these people live, right? And they're at the restaurant at like a family dinner on Sunday. They don't know whether the guy coming out of the bathroom is going to kill them or whether it's just a guy coming out of the bathroom. So it wasn't really resolved. That's how they live in that tension, right? So you don't have to have a resolution, but this should be a real good reason to not have a resolution. You know what I mean? It shouldn't just be like, I couldn't think anything or, you know what I mean? I don't know, or because that's the way life is. I mean, you know what I mean? So go for the resolution unless, unless the story tells you otherwise. Okay, so a couple more things. Let me just go up through this. So uh, story about this character, it takes place in the community, strong conflict, strong resolution, okay? couple more things. The character has to speak at least once. Okay. And by the way, when I say character, you, you guys are telling a story. Like one day the playground woke up, you know what I mean? You know, the kids went out, it was a hot day. You know, Michael didn't know what to do as he, you know what I mean? So you're telling the story. You can have dialogue, but this is not a scene yet. We're kind of doing the foundation from which plays, movies, novels, dance, everything can come from. Okay. We're doing a story here. So, so it's not like a scene. It's a story. One day, David went down the street. He saw Jamal. Jamal saw Cynthia. They went to the store. And all of a sudden, something happened. Okay. All right. Good. So, oh, and, and it ca it can also be a thought bubble, right? So, uh, Keith, it depends on what your what your character does. Your your character can speak, or the character could be, you know, oh my God, what do I do every day? The same thing. The tree thought as it blah blah blah. You know, whatever. All right. So, speaking out loud, thinking it, whatever. Okay. All right. Two more things. The story has to rhyme, okay? Rhyme? Rhyme, yeah, it's a rhyming story, all right? It's a rhyming story. Now, those of you that know me know that I have a hip hop background. It doesn't have to be a, a rap. It's not, I'm not saying it has to be a rap. Every culture has an oral tradition, right? And every culture has a rhyming tradition. So you don't have to rap it. It could be, you know, uh, just a poem. It could be a limerick. It could be a haiku or something like that, right? But it has to rhyme, okay? It has to rhyme. The and part thing. of it, the whole thing has to the whole thing has to rhyme has to rhyme okay it's a rhyming story okay all right now uh and here's the here's the last thing the kicker the whole story from beginning to end can only be four lines okay it's a four line story all right so in four lines you got to get in a description of the world you got to describe the world oh, I, didn't, I didn't mean it up so you need to describe the world describe the person or the character conflict, resolution, the character needs to speak, and it needs to rhyme in four lines, all right? Now, a couple things before you get, don't, don't get too scared. So, so, you know, like I might say, well, I'm not gonna give you an example. You get my, my point. Well, you know, uh, on a real busy street stat a big head boy. Boom, you got description of the world, busy street. Description of the kid, busy boy, right? He was sad and alone, because he had no toy. He had no money to buy a toy, whatever. Ah, you got the conflict. He's a kid with a big head. He got no toy, right? He thought to himself, damn, what the heck am I going to do? That's him speaking. So he went and borrowed $5 from his grandma, Ruru. I don't know. You know what I mean? Boom, the resolution, right? Conflict. He didn't, I mean, that's simple, but you know what I mean? And you get the resolution. He went and got $5 from his grandma. The conflict, he, he was poor. He didn't have any money to buy a toy. His description, he had a big head, right? Um, the street was busy, you know? So a couple of things I wanna say, and then I'm gonna let y'all do this. You know, again, through, limit, through great limitation, oftentimes comes great creativity. You know, if New York Theater Workshop said, hey, we're gonna give you for your new play an unlimited budget, hey, I wouldn't turn that down. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say no. But oftentimes when a theater, or someone says, hey, you only got this amount, you can only do this amount. Oftentimes that's where great creativity comes. Okay, how are we going to create this crowd scene? And we only got seven people. If someone says, take 200 people, it's like, okay, you know, but then how do we get creative? So through limitation of structure, great creativity sometimes can be fostered, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, and the same thing with a word. I, you know, again, going back to hip hop for a second, some of the great MCs, Jay-Z, Lauryn Hill, Ka uh, Kanye, even though he's on a deep end, um, K Kendrick Lamar, they can say a couple of words and you can see the whole thing. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. You're like, oh my God, there it is, right? So using a few words to vividly paint. That's why we did those two things earlier, okay? You don't need a lot of words. When I read a script that's 100 pages, boy, I tell you, every word better be worth it. It better be worth uh -huh. it. You know, if you can tell us tale in 20 pages, don't use 100. Don't use 100, right? 
if you're going to use 100 everywhere, every comma, I'm serious, every punctuation, whatever one needs to be earned and necessary. Or else take it out, take it out. Woo, 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 woo. You know what I mean? People are too busy. There's just too much going on. Okay, so I'm going to give you all, what, 10 minutes? Is that okay? Is that too little, too much? Okay, 10 minutes. Oh, one more thing I want to say before I let you go to this final thing. There's a question I always have is, um, with this four line thing is like, well, what is a line, right? Yeah, that's the good question. What is a line, right? So I, I often, this is me, but I oftentimes approach writing from rhythm. To me, to me, I hear the words, I hear the dialogue. Not every writer is like that, but I hear it. It's like call and response. So to me, the answer of what is a line, what constitute a line, it depends on what the rhyming structure is that you set up, right? If I set up, ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Ba 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 da da da, right? Da 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 ba da da ba ba da ba ba. Can you hear that? You see where each line is, right? It's like I am in pentameter. You know it's ten syllables. Or I might go ba 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 da ba ba da ba ba da ba. That's one line. Di 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 da. Right. So in that in that example. There's more syllables in that line than in the first example. Hope not confusing you, but there's more syllables in it, right? But it's still a line. But don't go ba 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 da ba ba da 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 you could go a a b b once upon a time in the to ho mo right all night right you can go a b a b no right you can even do a a a b or A A A yeah A A B ba ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 that's jazz right da 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 huh right that's a rhyme style does that make any sense what I'm saying no kind of going off but yeah so whatever rhyme you want to do good then that be rap any rhyme okay I'm gonna give you all till two twenty four okay. And then we'll hear these and we'll do it that way. All right. And again, we'll try to get a couple of, of, of out of the other participants in too. So when we come back, if you want to put your four line thing in the chat. I don't know if I can get 10 or 15 or 20 or 30, but I'll try to read a couple of them to get it to spend. All right. Okay, great. I'll see y'all in at 2.24. Here we go.
All right, one more minute. One more minute, please. Okay, let's come on back. Let's come on back. All right. So what I want to do is maybe we'll go back and forth between, we got some really good ones on the chat, which is great. I love this. And then we all, we have us right here. So we'll give, we'll hear each one maybe a couple of times. We'll give a little feedback. I don't know if we'll have time. Usually what we'll do, what we would do is, we would get feedback and then you all get a chance to go and revise them. You know what I mean? Revise these and come back. So we'll see, because I want to leave a, a little time at the end for some questions or comments. So, but let's at the very least hear it. And again, I might ask you to do it a couple of times. All right, so uh, Keith, can we start with you? Yeah, <clears throat> okay. The crown jewel of the block, this beat down playground is where the whole hood descended. But this bucket of blood had a secret. She held too many lives that were ended. So in the still of one night, she cracked her concrete voice to the sky. Dear Lord, whatever gods there may be, please let us gentrify. <laughs> all right, all right, good, good, good. <laughs> I think that was pretty good. I think that's pretty solid. Quite. Great. Quite brilliant and original, actually. That is really, really great. Can we hear it one more time? Do you mind? <laughs> if you must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. It's very creative. The crown jewel of the block. This beat down playground is where the whole hood descended. But this bucket of blood had a secret. She held too many lives that were ended. So in the still of one night, she cracked her concrete voice to the sky. Dear Lord, whatever gods there may be, Please let us gentrify. <laughs> Let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand for that. Fantastic work. Fantastic work. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty complete. I think that's pretty complete. Really nice, Keith. All right. Uh, let's go to someone on the chat. And Aaron said we can undo the mic so we can hear their voice. Oh, that would be great. All right. Let's do, uh, let's do Nancy Cohen. Is Nancy there? Nancy, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Can, hi. Can, oh, this is great. Hi. Can you read your story? Do you mind? Sure, sure. It's a little. Uh, uh. Angina walked down the stairs, quiet in her white socks. She brewed up a tea with milk and changed all the keys and the locks. Okay, good, good. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. So that's great. I love the, the, the vividness of the socks, you know what I mean? And the stairs. Um, I think maybe a little, maybe we could get a just more description of the stairs. You know what I mean? Maybe something that contrasts with the white socks or the stairs brown. I don't know, but something like that. But the other thing that, um, so I think you have a great foundation, but we need a more of a conflict. You know what I mean? So does her yeah. mother not want her to brew the tea? You know what I mean? Does she had too much tea? Um, is changing the keys and locks going to keep someone out? You know what I mean? So I think you have a good, a great first draft. But then it's about bringing in what is that, what is the conflict in it? You know what I mean? And it's, can it's I ask crazy. you some, something? Yes. Can I ask you? Because yes. she's somebody that I met at an art residency once, and uh -huh. to put her in, in the neighborhood is so much a contrast to how she would 
function here that all I could imagine was she want to stay safe and lock all the keys and change everything. Right, right. Well, I think different. that's, no, Nancy, I think that's great. So then what we need to do, and I know it's difficult because you only got four lines, yeah. but I think then the idea is how do you bring some of that into the story? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. How do you bring some of that into the story? Like, you know, Angela was terrified. She didn't know what, you know, so, you know what I mean? So we understand. Yes. And then yeah. how does it resolve? She changed the keys and locks and then does someone break come in otherwise? Or does she change the keys and locks and then has a sigh of relief, even though there was no danger in the first place? You know what I mean? So I think you have beautiful descriptive language and what we need is the conflict and the resolution to anchor the language and re really make it into a story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then also you would need someone to describe, like her, Angina to talk for one time. She walked down the stairs, okay, do this quietly, Angina, to herself, or, you know what I mean? She needs the word went in there. But I think it's a great, a great crack. Four in. lines? <laughs> Four, Four lines. lines. Four lines. But let's give her a hand. I think it was a really, really great crack at it. Give her a hand. Thanks. And I love that she brewed up a tea of, with milk and the white socks. And there's definitely some interesting descriptive language there. All right, wonderful. Okay, uh, who from the screen? Doris, Tremaine, anybody? Okay, Doris, go ahead. Okay. This is Michael. Tonight we need to plan our show and decide which way we need to go. Inez, I'm tired of your usual forays and want technology to shine our plays. I dem Michael, I demand a traditional route. No fancy electronics for you to suit, Inez. Then count me out for every for, for my tale. Your boring show is sure to fail. Okay, good, good. Give him a hand, give him a hand, give him a hand. I got a real good sense of the characters um, and what they wanted. Now, what I would say is, and I just I want to know more about Michael. He's just really, really interesting. <laughs> that goes back from the old the old piece. I was like, who is this guy? Like, should I like be worried about him? Is he cool? Like, but I like that that kind of like you know it wasn't like a simple type of trail. So I think this is great. The only thing I would ask if we had a chance to do it again is just for the purposes of this activity to flip it into a story, right? So right now you have this dialogue going back between, and I want like a narration, right? Mm. I want you to be like so not you know. Michael and what was the second character? Was it you? Or Inez. Was it you? Inez. So Michael and Inez were going back and forth. Then this happened, this happened, this happened. Ah. You understand what I'm saying? To yeah. put it in that form. And then the other thing is, I think I get the conflict. So the conflict is what again? Tell me the conflict. One wants a lot of electronics and the other one wants the traditional. Right, right. So, you, so, so this is a good example of you had a good conflict. I need to know a little bit more about the stakes of the conflict. Okay, now that doesn't stay. So like, why is this important to Michael or Inez that it be their, his way or her way? Does it make any sense? Mm -hmm. Stakes in a story doesn't necessarily mean it has to be, this is about the end of the world. It could be something like, I want salt. No, I want pepper. But you need to explain to us why it, it's a big deal for these characters. You guys understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So stakes, sometimes people feel like you need to be stakes. That means, okay, I need to make it more politically important. I need to, no, it's not about that, right? It could be something that seems just, minuscule like nothing but for that character it's like i want the blanket on this side no i want this side but then it's like you always do this you disrespect i mean you know so like you can we need to understand it so again i know you only got four lines but i think the conflict is there it's just about teasing in helping us understand a little bit about the stakes maybe michael wants the technology or no 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 inez wants technology right so maybe she doesn't what, want technology you know right. she wants a more modern approach right so why does michael not want it again you only you don't have a lot of space. Oh, I know. He, well, he doesn't he doesn't really know how to use this. So maybe there's a fear there, or does yeah, he? Yeah. Really, okay. And yeah. why does Inez want to use technology? Because she wants the show to sh to be better than it usually is. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 you have you have all of it for a great a great story. The question would be to how to get that in in a couple of words. Uh -huh. I mean, again, you know, again, I've seen people, I'm not saying you should do this, but every, like every story, every play is different. I've seen people do, take three lines to set up the situation. And then the fourth line is the conflict and the resolution. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like I've seen people do that. Or I've seen people do the conflict and the, like almost like the conflict in the first line, the resolution in the second line, and the third and fourth line are like descriptions of like the world or something like that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like there's a lot of different ways to do it. Like when introducing the conflict in a play, 
you know, a two hour play, usually they say 20, 30 minutes, but it depends. And fetch Clay McMahon, as soon as we started, bam, I was in on the conflict. Some people take 45 minutes before they do the conflict. There's no right or wrong. It just depends on what is best for the story, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, but I think it's really, really great to start. And I, I, this, this, I'm getting to know Inez, but this Michael character is really, really fascinating to me. I want to know more. Let's give Doris a hand again. Let's give Doris a hand. Thank you. Nice work. Okay, let's take one, one more of you all, then I'll go to the chat. Uh, Tremaine, you want to try? Sure, I'll go. Okay. Uh, dapped up the longtime bro at the barbecue. He said, hey, I got a job for you. I know it was no good, but I just listened where he stood. Okay, good, good. Give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand. All right, good. First of all, beautiful rhythm. Do the first line again. Bop, bop, the bit, was it? Dapped up. Dapped up, dapped up the longtime bro at the barbecue. He said, okay. hey, I got a job for you. Okay, good, 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 good. So again, this is similar to Doris. I mean, not the structure, but great rhythm, and you have the makings for a great story. So now, Again, this is another one of these things where I could, I could, from where I'm from, I could guess what the stakes are, maybe what the possibility, but you want to tease that in a little bit more. Like, again, this is cliche, but like, I got a job for you. He didn't want to do it, but he had to feed his baby. Again, that's cliche. I'm not, don't be like, but you know what I mean? But like, what are the stakes here? What are the stakes? I got a job for you. What's making him be like, I don't want to do this job. I'm going to walk away, right? It's not that easy, right? So you have to bring, you have to, the conflict is in the ether of the, it's in the, it's in the fabric of the story, but you got to clarify and, and strengthen it some more. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I don't know what the risks are. I can imagine what the risks are, but I don't fully know, right? But great rhythm, great characters. And then my question would be, how does it resolve? Like, what's your last line? Uh, so, but I listened where he stood. So he just, the, he just listened instead of, so I thought the, inner, the conflict was like his inner, like, I know I shouldn't be here. But right. Overall, I'm just gonna listen anyway. Like, right, right, right. But but I think I think that the conflict is there. But I think just teasing out what are the stakes of him listening or cons or or contemplating doing this job. Right. You know what I mean, again, you only got four lines, so you ain't got. It's not a whole speech. You know what I mean? But it, because there's a lot of different reasons that people are tempted by that. You know what I mean? It could be a lot of stuff. It could be he wants respect from this guy. It could be he just lost his father and he needs a father figure. It could be he needs money to pay his bills. It could be, you know what I mean? And I, I say that it's important with these kind of things because, you know, I, I know you're not saying this, but the whole idea of like, well, that's just the way someone is. I don't buy that. You know what I mean? Particularly with this kind of work. There's reasons why people do things, right? And then the other thing I would say for you, Tremaine, is the resolution. Um, yeah, what is the resolution? What does he decide? Or if he doesn't decide, if you don't want him to decide something, then why? You know what I mean? If you want to leave it on cliffhanger, why? So again, I think the conflict, sharpening that conflict and, and, and bringing that resolution home more will be the key to this. But you do have great characters, great descriptions, and I really love the rhythm. It sounded like jazz or like a rhyme or something like that. And the person who's telling the story can lean into that or lean away from it. But you, you've laid a real nice rhythm in the dialogue and um yeah you can't underestimate that as a writer you know what i mean as a playwright like putting some real juicy rhythms in there for actors to say does that make any sense mm -hmm. you know you want you want actors to be like i like putting this in my mouth so you got all the seeds there i think another revision would have we would be we'd be kicking it all right give it up for tremaine thank you brother thank you my friend okay let's go to the chat let's see what we got here uh We got something from someone on YouTube. Oh, wow, okay. Can we get them to come in on YouTube? How does the technology work? Speaking of uh, Michael and Inez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think if Emma is watching on YouTube and so she can't like kind of call in. She put in the comments on YouTube. Hi, Emma. Um, but she put in the comments on YouTube, but she can't, we can't like communicate back and forth with her. But other okay. folks who are in here, we can. Okay. Um, Let's see, Tremaine, can you read Emma's story? I hope Emma doesn't mind. Do you see it in the chat? Yeah. Okay, can you, can you go ahead and read that? Sure. Uh, between Target and Walmart, L, L train screams, my ghost like girl body into barely being. Back in the birthplace, home space, my refuge dreams. I slip through the chain gates entering two filled the whole humanity. Yeah. Okay, give her, give her a hand, give her a hand, give her a hand. 
I assume it was a hug. Give me a hand. Uh -huh. All right. That was, that was great. So I think this is another one where the first line is so powerful. It's so descriptive and poetic. Between Target and Walmart, L Train screams. You guys know L Train? I assume that's Chicago. So that's just so, it's just, that's just so vivid. Between Target and Walmart, you got this screeching L Train. I almost see the neighborhood. Um, now, okay, let's see, my, my ghost like girl body into barely being back in the birth play home. Space. So there's something here that's, okay, so let me give you guys, let me say something. There's something here about reclaiming or coming to terms with where this character is from, you know what I mean? And going back there. Now, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit, uh, it's very specific, but it's a little, a little bit um, open but again, this might be what you want. So this is a good example where there is a conflict here. There's a tension here, but we don't, at least for me, I don't fully understand it. I know there's something about coming back, reclaiming, you know what I mean? Going back to the, the place that made her or made this person. Um, so I think there is a conflict and there's definitely a tension, but I think this is an example of, of the, 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 um, the choice of the storyteller. The storyteller might be like, you know what? I wanna leave this purposely open like vague is not the right word, you know what I mean? But a little open because I want people to be like, oh, this is someone coming back from college. You know what I mean? No, this is someone coming back. They're, they're 65 years old and they haven't been back since then. This is someone that, so this is like, it's not as specific, but that might be totally what the storyteller wants. Does it make any sense? Um, and, and the good thing about this is you make it open and then we as, as the listeners and the audience can put our own thing about it in, into it. The challenge is, is that there's more room for people to be like, oh, this is about someone coming back after they want drugs and something, something. And you might be like, that's not what I was trying to say. You know what I mean? So that's really up to Emma, really. Like if Emma wants it to be, because the poetic language is really beautiful. It's really descriptive. Um, there's definitely a resolution entering to fill the hole you made in me, right? So that's kind of like a, she's here. She decided to come back. So I think the resolution there, the main thing is the conflict. And I have to, I'd have to talk to, uh, to Emma about whether she want to keep it open or not. Does that make any sense what I'm saying? Yeah. You as a storyteller have to decide how, how, much, how much you want the audience to work. I know that sounds really bad, but, but you know, yeah. The more, the less commercial you get, the more you make in the audience work, right? The more commercial, either you make the audience work, but there's also a layer there where they don't have to work or there's no layer at surface. Does that make any sense? Like think of Star Wars, the first one, not the, the first one. There's a layer there that anybody can get to. Wow, Darth Vader. But there's also some deep stuff going on in Star Wars, right? But there's other movies that it's all surface. Does that make any sense what I'm saying? I went, um, I think, wait a minute. Was I with, oh, I was a PS22. We went to Copenhagen one time. It was a solo theater festival. And there was this guy, you guys might, might know this guy. I don't know if he's still around. He basically comes on stage and he pricks himself with these needles, right? He just has a, like an underwear. He pricks himself, bald head, right? He just stands there. And because of the needles, he starts to bleed. Ooh. Starts to bleed. He starts to bleed first slowly, then more, then more. And then he's just covered with blood. And then the lights go down. That's the show. Maybe Aaron has heard of that. I forgot the guy's name, but um, that's the show now. And he can only, the doctor said he can only do the show six times a year because he can't lose, the, after that it'd be dangerous, right? The show's about 15, 20 minutes, he just stays there. Now, that has a conflict, that has tension, right? That's a story, but you're really asking the audience, that's like the real avant-garde, right? And so again, it's gonna be smaller audiences, but those audiences gonna be like, oh my God, I love the guy that, you know what I mean? So the more, the more, does that make any sense? Oh, what's his name, Ron? Ron Athey, that maybe that's him. Ball head guy, yeah, this is a number of years ago. Maybe that's him. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Um, so anyway, I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's just like you're making the audience work more. So with Emma's thing, I'm not as clear with the conflict. Again, not that you have to necessarily spell out the conflict at the get-go, but by the end, you know, things that tend to be more mainstream, it's like, I understand that conflict. It was about a father and a son, and they, you know, right, even if you did it creatively. But things that tend to be like, I don't know what that was about. Was it about the father or son? Maybe it was about his inner life. But wow, that was great. That tends to be a little bit more into the avant-garde. Does that make any sense? And the brother that was bleeding, that's the real avant-garde. You know what I mean? That's the real, that's the real, like, that's the real, like, you got to work. You got to be like, what is this about? What is the tension? Like, but some people will love that stuff. And some people are like, I don't like this. What is this story? You know? So anyway, that will be the decision of the storyteller right there with Emma. Okay, let's go to one more person in the chat and then we'll go to uh, Celia. Yeah, Keith. I have to excuse myself because I have another call. 
and go ahead leave but thank you i appreciate it i really appreciate this workshop thank you so go, much go 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 man go in fact you're right the time is running last so let's let's go to cilia and then we'll have any final questions thanks keith thanks thank for your you. participation man okay, thank you take care yeah okay <laughs> i was gonna say i want to go to all of them like what's the next door okay cilia why don't you why don't you bring us home and then okay. we'll wrap it up with any final questions or thoughts and we'll let y'all go. So I'll hold y'all forever. Okay, go ahead. So I did pick one person. So okay. my boy Ronnie is dirt dark and proud. Ver voting worth dying, his voice is loud. No blood today, just pushed with the crowd. Tomorrow come with Sheriff and then he howled. Tomorrow come with Sheriff and then he what? Howled. And then he howled. Which is not proud crowd, okay. but I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it. <laughs> okay, okay. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Okay. I think that's great. You got a strong, juicy conflict. I love that it was so it's from the perspective of the parent, right? Yes. Okay. I think that's really good working. I would say two things. The conflict, so this, in this case, the conflict is really strong. Um, you got this historical piece. I love the perspective of the parent. I always wondered what the parents would were not what they were thinking, like why would they would do that? But some of these kids were like 10, 11 years yeah. old, 12 years old. Now my, not, not to get all personal, but my father was in Blood, Bloody Sunday. He was older, like 20, 21, he was still young, you know? So he was still, but you know, but some of these kids at Birmingham, they were like 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. That's different than 20, even though the 20 people, they were still young people, like, you know, he got his head blood and he was running across the bridge and stuff. But, uh, tw you know, 10, 11 years old, did the parents like, did they say yes? Did they know? How were they terrified? Did the kids sneak out? So I love the story you're talking about. Um, the only thing I would say is two things. One is the now maybe they, they do this in Mississippi, but the dirt brown, what is it? I don't, most parents I don't think would, would describe it in that way that I know of. Okay. But, may, but maybe they would there. Like most parents won't be like, they would say he's chocolate brown or, you know, yummy brown or whatever, but they wouldn't say, I don't think, again, I'm not from Mississippi, but they wouldn't say my boy is dirt brown. I don't, I don't think, I don't think. Dirt I don't dark. Think. Yeah, dark brown or yummy, you know, like, how, again, this is my neighborhood, but, you know, yummy brown. He's, you know, he's, he's you, you look like gum brown. You my brown sugar, that kind of stuff. But they wouldn't say dirt brown just because even though dirt is a beautiful thing, dirt is kind of associated with dirty, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so they wouldn't necessarily say that. I don't think. Now, again, I'm not from Mississippi. Maybe it's different down there. But that, I would say just be mindful of that. And then the other thing is, what is the resolution again? The howl, say it again. The um, Tomorrow come with Sheriff, and then he howled. Okay, 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 okay. So you mean howled like... So this is another one that the, the resolution worked because the howled is so powerful, but I don't know if you mean howled like howled in the jail cell, howled like, yes, let's do it, like... What is yeah. the howl? So that's okay it's to keep in the jail, jail, jail. It's in the jail. Okay, okay. Yeah. So there was an example of, in my opinion, like I didn't exactly know where the howl was, but it still worked as a resolution. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you, but it was a little bit open. So if you wanted, if you, Celia, wanted people to know for sure that that was from the jail cell, then you might say some some from the cell. Ah, he howled. You know what I mean? Like in defiance. Mm -hmm. But if you want to keep it open. You know, again, sometimes it's like, yeah, that resolution doesn't work or you do need conflict, but sometimes you can keep it open in terms of what it, what it is. But I thought that was really great. I appreciate you uh, picking that. And like I said, I don't think I've ever had someone pick the past. So that just opened up something. I, people have always picked the moment. So the fact that you opened up, this is your community, but you're looking back. Mm -hmm. That's really, really creative and exciting. And I'm going to have to, if you don't mind, I'm going to include that in future workshops. Like you can also do the past, you can also do the future. Like that opens up a whole nother world. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate Let's give Silly a hand. Silly a hand. One more time. Thank you so much. All right. So we got a few more minutes for questions uh, or comments. And if not, I'll let you go. Any questions or comments about this or anything? Anybody? Let's see. I see something in the chat here. Yes, you can have a comment on your story. Let's see if there's any comments or questions first, okay? And if, if there isn't, then we'll go to yours. Thank you for that. Okay, any questions? So, telling a story in a short form, like a poem or song. Yeah, so, yeah, so this question is, um, could you, this is from L. Pershing. They said, could you talk a little about telling a story in a short format, i.e. a poem or a song? Yeah, so I would say that, 
you know, there is poetry in storytelling, right? I'm, 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 I, I do a lot of that. I'm really excited about that kind of putting poetry or verse in my stories. Um, there's also stories in songs, right? And there's stories in poems. I would say the difference is, is that in the song, it's primarily a song, not a story. And in a story, it's primarily a story, not a song or a poem. Does that make any sense? So for example, now there's exceptions to that. Bob Dylan, uh, you know, Jay-Z, some people can, can tell, Steely Dan back in the 70s, they can tell phenomenal stories in three or four minutes, you know? But even a Steely Dan, it's also about the melody. I would say that's more prominent than the story itself. So I think that when you're working in storytelling in other forms, like if you're doing a song and it's a great story, but the harmony or the melody sucks, you know what I mean? It's not gonna fly, you know? So it's almost like the, yeah, the same thing in a poem. Like if, it, if you're judging it or looking at it, evaluating or looking at it as a poem, you might have a story there, but it's more about the poetry. It's more about the poetics. Does that make any sense? Where in theater, as great as the poetry may be and as important as central as it be, it's really about the story at the heart of it. Does that make any sense? That's the main thing. Like if you go to a play and you're like, man, the poetry was amazing, it's vivid imagery, but the story just was terrible. Mm. It's like, it's not gonna fly, you know? But if you, if you see an amazing poem, if you read an amazing poem and the imagery and the words, is it, and the story was like, okay, you're like, that's an amazing poem. So I think in some ways it comes down to like, I guess in an odd way, how you will be evaluated, you know what I mean? And what is the, the, the thing that you're, you're doing? Um, you guys know Indazaki Shange? She's a, an amazing playwright, poet. She's most famous for, for, uh, for colored girls who uh, who've considered suicide, but she has like a huge body of work. So I had the pleasure maybe about, eh, maybe about a decade ago of interviewing her for American Theater Magazine. And uh, that in itself was a whole experience. But I remember one time we, we were talking and she was like, yeah, you know, I do poetry, I do novels, I do theater, but I'm not doing theater anymore. I'm sticking to poetry. She's like, because in theater, something's got to happen. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, I just, you know, poetry, nothing has to happen. It's not a, word, a less form, it's equal. But like in poetry, I could talk about Tremaine's Yankee hat, the Yankee hat, white and crisp over his brow. You know what I mean? I can wait, but, but, but she was like, in theater, something has to happen. Tremaine had the hat. Doris wanted to take the hat. Tremaine was like, this is my hat that I got from my mother. You can't take it. The, you know, something has to happen. She was like, I can't concern myself with making art right now where something has to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to do my poetry. So that's what I would say about that, that question, um, L. Pershing. Like something has to happen in stories where if you're doing poetry or, or if you're doing a story in a poem or a song, something has maybe has to happen, but you don't have to be as strong on the poetry. I mean, on the story. You should, but it's really the, 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 gen, the genre is, the form is, is poetry or the form is, is, is song, even though all those things are, are mixing. You know, obviously there's a lot of mixing and matching. Okay, uh, would this be how you start Alex, would this be how you start out when writing or were these exercises to demonstrate conflict resolution and, and character for us? Um, Alex, a little bit of both. I mean, you know, I didn't start out with these four line things as a way to develop when I started as an artist, but I do feel like, as, you know, I started acting when I was 10 years old. And then as I was 14, um, I started to rhyme. And so again, kind of like what the lat, what L Pershing was saying as, an, as a, a rap artist, you're doing stories within four or five minutes, three minutes, you know what I mean? And so this is just kind of some exercise and activities that I have created to kind of help us develop more, um, yeah, they, they kind of develop more how to do, this is kind of like a microcosm of a whole full length story, a whole full length play, okay? That's kind of what this is. And again, if you can do this, it's not saying you can then do a three hour play, but in some ways, some of the same things we're working on is the same thing you're working on with a longer, fuller work, whether it's a novel or a play or a movie. It's just that in those things, you have more space. So you have more opportunity to mess up or not mess up, but you know what I mean? You have more consideration. So this is like a microcosm of what the big thing is. You know, even these conversations going back and forth, this is what we do at, you know, do at the workshop, you know, it's just more material. So it's just more complex in terms of how you layer things. These characters connected to this storyline, you might have three or four storylines, but it's the same, to me, it's the same principles. So this is my way to do it. Okay, I can take like one more question. And for the person who wanted to get some feedback on their story, why don't you send it to Aaron? Aaron, can you share your email? And I'll give you some feedback because I don't think we have time. I'll give you some feedback and I'll send it through to Aaron. Okay, so send it to Aaron. Aaron sent to me. I'll send the feedback to Aaron because I do want to get everybody in, but I also want to be mindful of time. Okay, so I will look at you, your thing, and I will give it. I'll give it to you. Uh, okay, here's here's here it is. Literary at NewYorkTheaterWorkshop.org. Now I don't know if I can do twenty of them, 
But if y'all, <laughs> but send me, uh, send me something. I'll try to give you a little feedback on it and I'll send the feedback back to that and then you'll get it. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Any other final questions or thoughts? Thank you. Okay. I answered that question. Okay, cool. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for participating. And I, it was a great joy to work with all of you all in person, even the people that I didn't see. And so I'm hoping that I get to, to meet y'all, even the ones I didn't see. I just felt your energy. And uh, I'm in LA, but I, I am going to have a play at uh, with Classical Theater Harlem in the summer at uh, Uptown. So I won't be there for all of it, but I'll be there for some of it. So I hope you come see that. And maybe you'll see some of the stuff. Oh, that's what he's talking about. You know, you see what I'm saying? It's an adaptation of uh, Richard III. It's called Seize the King. Uh, it was at La Jolla Playhouse, and now it's going to make his New York premiere. But if you see me there, definitely holler at me. Okay, I'll be there for at least a couple of nights. All right, y'all. Thanks so um, much. Thank you so much, Will. Thank you, Tremaine thank and you. Doris and Celia and Keith and for everybody for tuning in from home. Um, if you have a few minutes, I'm going to put a link to a survey in the, uh, in the chat to let us know how this was for you. Um, and also a link to our, all of our past virtual programming that you can find on our website. Um, but please, I hope everybody stays healthy and stays safe. And I look forward to seeing you back in the theater soon. Okay. Thank right. you all so Bye, much. Everyone. Have a good one. Take care. Great. So where's the... So I thought there was... Hmm.